and we are back oh, let me put away the mic a little bit we are good so let's continue to the next topic oh second one out of five but the, the last the last the last three was gonna go fast so next is the pretty is this this is like the actual lesson we are studying this this class uh, you may have heard about this before anyway everywhere all the time it's a normal distribution that one that way right so before let's go into it so but first so what is normal right we want to find something normal so if something is normal it means it's normal uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it is not extreme, it's not extraordinary, it's just normal, it's something that you would think about something. If you think about a normal dog, you would think of a dog like four legs, with, ear, with uh, one tail, two ears, right? In this case, it is like it's normal in, in, that, in the same sense. So when we think about something normal, which we will see in, in, in a moment, It's gonna be represented by this um, this special function, a special probability distribution function. So before we move on, so uh, what we have learned so far, <coughs> uh, pretty much like all the theoretical distributions. So we have um, the the binomial ones is uh, very often used, and then we have the geometric ones, or almost all the discrete ones. Uh, common when you deal with some uh, this kind of data and statistics so for the continuous one we only learn about the uniform one because I'm, I'm not, I, I don't want to go into the details for other things I just wanted to, to, to just skip right into the normal distribution so when we say normal we are, we are thinking about all, all these numbers like all these statistics that we uh, I forgot to connect my tablet. Give me a moment. Cool. Uh, that works now. Okay. So we think about all these um kind of data or information that we encounter all the time. Like if you think about height of human, you want to. You want to know if if we if we if we if we collect enough samples, let's say a thousand or ten thousand people, and then we plot all the heights of human, what would the distribution or what would the curve look like? If we have x, wait, we have an egg. Let, let's say just the, the the expensive egg nowadays. A single one might weigh between I don't know. 5 grams to 20 grams but like if, if you get lots of eggs and wet them all then you will get some it will be a discrete distribution because it, it this one comes from a sample and that sample is what we can actually measure and of course we just round, round out the, the decimals to higher one or oh, if you think about grades, like if, if at the end of semester I plot all the grades of students in this class, or let's just say let's collect all the grades for all the classes in TU Tamasa and plot them all, what would it look like? So all these numbers, like the height, the weight, the grade, they first of all they are <coughs> they form a continuous probability distribution oh not, not, not oh, right. these two right, because <coughs> because again you, you, you cannot measure the height exactly it's gonna be like in a range rather than up or down the actual curve the actual distribution would look like a curve but for the grade it's gonna be something between 0 and 4 
need to add mods to the same mod, so that's gonna be fine. Eh? So let's just, um, skip that for a moment. Okay, so if 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 we have all this information and collect them all and try to plot a, a, a sampling distribution, what would that thing look like? So we have a nice. Link, which I think I have it here. You can again click on the link below, and that will bring to you this web page. Oh, for the oh, let me turn that off. Oops, and let's watch the link. If you have watched it on your device, then you can just skip this part. So that was the clip. So what what did we see in the clip? We we see this kind of similar thing. That the bot has a name. It's called the Carton. The Carton bot, right? So the the experiment was you have lots of marbles, or in this case, they use a metal bead beads. The drop it at the top, right? and you see it at the top that they are like. In on on this board there are pegs everywhere and they form a hexagonal grid. Hexagonal Hexa hexagonal grid. Right? So if you drop a ball, a single ball, right, if we hit that and it may bounce to the left or to the right. Right, that's kind of random. If you if you move if if, if it drops like, slightly to the to the to the right, it's gonna what's left or right? Yeah, right. It's gonna drop to it's gonna move to the right. If it drops slightly to the left, it's gonna move to the left. Or maybe it bounces around, or maybe whatever. So you cannot predict the behavior uh, uh, beha the behavior of a single bead. Uh, you made it move left or right. There's no way to to say. But what the clip just illustrate is if you have enough balls, if you put in lots of lots of balls in that case, I think it was five hundred, yeah, that many balls. Right, then you can see a pattern, right, and 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 that pattern, that pattern looks like it was, it is, is my hair too big? Maybe. Let me go first. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> you have a board line. It's just like the, the left edge, the right edge. And the bead falls into these columns. Like this, 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 these columns are separated by like a plastic panel. And what's nice is that this, the, the balls, right, have this distribution. So you can think of dropping a single ball as a trial. This whole thing is one experiment. Dropping a single ball, this is a trial. And that ball may bounce to one of these um, slots at the bottom. Right? But if you perform, if you repeat a trial 100 times, like in this case maybe 500 times. Oh, let, let me get the music back. If you do this 500 or more times, right, then you're gonna see some pattern that it's gonna follow some 
predetermined pattern. You, you may notice that there was a mark on the board. Like that looks like that. That was that was drawn before. That that, that, that was drawn by you know, computing get get some value and draw that exact board. And then if if you flip the whole thing and start the experiment, the balls will most likely follow that trend. If you repeat, if you reset and repeat the experiment again, the balls still follow the same pattern. Like, no matter how, how many times you do, you do that, maybe some will be higher than the curve, some may be lower, right? But the overall outcomes, they do not differ much. So that suggests something. <coughs> <coughs> and as you can see, dropping the balls, right? That, that seems natural, right? It goes left to right, right? And in the change directions, on what server? So this is what we gonna call normal. And in this case, it is called normal, as in we can think intuitively about okay, if something happens, then it should like look like that. And just one one side note here, just to be um, correct. This was actually the binomial distribution that we studied last week. Okay. All this ball represents like you fl flipping a, co a single coin that it lands on as a head or tail. But if you want to count how many heads, if, if, if you flip 10 coins, like, what would the distribution of the number of heads be this is what and that distribution is called a binomial distribution in this experiment it's also the binomial distribution but with large enough number of balls with large sorry with, with, with a wide enough ball then that binomial distribution is gonna converges or approaches sorry it can be approximated by the normal distribution, which we can see in a moment. If you want to f look at the details, explanations on how the current board works, you can go to again that link right below. That will brings you to the auto one. What was that? Oh, by the way, this guy's good. You should check out his his channel on Vsauce. Like, so like so uh, more so many clips are like mind blowing. You can you can see he has like ten million views, eight million views. This guy's awesome. So anyway, let's get back to. If you want to look at the clip, I just show just you know again take your time, finish it and come back. If not, then let's continue. Press the mouse. Da, 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 da. <clears throat> so the a, a normal distribution is the most most important in quotation right, of all distribution. I think like if you know this, then you can predict so many things about the actual statistics that you will use. So. This is a uh, uh, formal de definition that I put in just in case. Okay. So a normal distribution is a continuous probability distribution that has a function f that you can plot. Right? Can um, for a probability distribution function, it's gonna be a curve. Right, come back, and when we, we talk, when we talk about the probability of something happening, we talk about the area under this curve. Right? The normal distribution is no different than what we we 
health there. Like that, that's like the, the, the most basic case, which is the uniform case. We may have an uh, exponential, blah blah or whatever. But uh, this one, this special thing, it's called the normal distribution. It has some function that you don't you don't you don't need to memorize. Like no no one in the world needs to memorize. It's everywhere. Just if you are familiar with the exponential, you can think of it as um, the the inverse. It's it's about the inverse of exponential of x square. Or or all these numbers are just parameter that's like shift or scale the curve. But the, the main terms is the inverse of the exponential of x square. That cause that is going to produce this curve. And this curve is what we are going to use to approximate so many things for the real application on statistics. So what is special about this curve? Let's take a closer look. No, but first here. All these curves, the, 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 blue, the blue one, the red one, the green one, the yellow one, these are all normal distribution. But they have different parameters. A curve have again. When we talk about the statistics, data, we talk about these two parameters. We talk about mu, which is the average. Or in this in this case, that happens to be equals to the the, the, the center. Let me re rewrite that. Mu again is the ratio. That happens to be the median and the mod. They are the same. So if you look at the, the, the blue part, the blue part, right, mu is zero, the average is zero. And if you look at that, that's the center of this curve. Right. It goes left after zero, it goes right before. Sorry, it, it, because like the, this, this, it, 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 it is reflected around the axis. So that's the the mean, right? And that the, the the second value it is the variance that measure how spread the curve is. So for the blue curve, that number is small. That means it would look narrow. Like narrow is as in the data will clump together in the center and that is what we see here right it just goes most of the values goes into the middle for the red one we have the same average the same center here right. but now the variance is higher and then with when, when the high when the variance goes higher the curve spreads further so this red one, right? Like you, you, you start with like the, the blue one with part two. Like when we increase the variance, it goes like this, and it spreads to, to the sides, to both sides at the same time. When we have the same mu, a different variance in this case are five. The curve is very spread, right? We have a wide curve, but. Sorry about my. You have a wide but short curve. For that one, for mu, right? In the, for the for the green one, mu is minus two. That means it's center is minus two. Right? And when the sigma is pi, pi five, yeah, the pi five, right? it means that the the curve is narrow. But the width of the curve, the the look on how narrow or how wide the curve is is between the blue one, which is pi two, and then the red one, which is one. So that works out. So all these all these curves are normal distribution that can be computed by using the previous formula. Once we determine what the center or the mu. And what the spread of the variance is, 
we're gonna we're gonna study that in details in a moment. So that's some joke, I guess. That's normal. That's paranormal. Ooh, scary. So as as you can see, the normal distribution has like many forms. It depends on you. You can move the the center to the left, to the right, however you want. You can make it spread out on error as much as much as you want. But when we study with we we need to study something that you know can be computed, that can be understood commonly among the statisticians. So we use this one standard. There are so many normal distribution on Earth because you have you can move them around, you can scale them around. But there is only one standard normal distribution, and this happens when we fix the center of the mu to be at the center or at zero, and we let the standard deviation sigma be one. Because you know we love number one, that is still to work with. So that is re represented here. I recall that when we write the normal distribution, we have to specify what the mean and the variance are. In this case, we let the mean be zero and the variance be one. So this is gonna be uh, the unique. <clears throat> if you go outside the street and ask any random stranger about the standard number of distribution, they are gonna talk about this same thing, given that they know statistics. So once we have that, what what do we, what kind of information do we need out of this curve? And then again, we are looking for. The three basic probability. We 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 were we are interested in seeing what what proportion of of the area under the curve or what is the probability that the number we select at random is going to be less than zero, or what is the probability that the number is going to be greater than two. Oh, what is the probability that is between minus one and four? Easy, etc. So we are gonna just talk about that one single thing, and then we are going to to, to come back and explain how we can use this one standard normal distribution to solve the problem for any kind of normal distribution. So you may have. Study this in I don't know high school, wherever. Well, like that is kind of like painful. I have been there, and it's not a good experience. So the thing is, like this is kind of like out there that they use this table since I don't know two hundred or three hundred years ago, and they still use it now. Because you some you are somehow expected to be able to read this table and get uh, information you want from this table. I'm, I'm not gonna go into the to the details of what this table, but like if if it, yeah, I'm going to go into the detail. Sorry, just uh, a little bit. So if you want to find the probability that's z, right? The random variable, or if you, if you pick one. Value at random, the probability that it's gonna rise between zero and k. In this case, if you write that curve, and that's zero, that's the center of the standard normal distribution. If you count k here, then that number can be found using this table, and using this tiny tiny table. So let's say k is um one point two five. You can you are going to need to look at the integer part, like the, the the portion before the dot, before the decimals. That's one. Oh, actually two. Okay, what that one and the one next to it. So, it is one point two. Uh, so now you want to look at 
but it's not in this. But yeah, let's let's just use that. Okay. And pi two, and then you have five. And you look at pi zero five, and you look at the in intersection of this row and column. And that's pi two one zero five six. So that means that zero is um zero point one zero five six. Or that means the the area. If you compute the area under this curve. That's gonna be equals to exact to approximately that number. Yeah. But then we are in 2020 already with COVID and all the climate change problem we have to solve. So we are not gonna use that. Yeah. If you if you have like to actually um take a whole uh, midterm exams in statistics, you are given this table. And you have like to which you like and find the one, and you 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 have to both find it, and you have to make sure that you you, you don't like mistake the row to the the other one, or you're gonna get zero on that problem. And you have to like squeeze your eye pretty hard, become an Asian. So of course there is an app for that. We don't we don't we don't need a table. So let's go to the app. I click on that, try it, and that will bring you to hopefully this one, right? So I, if you if you click on the link, the all the fields is gonna be blank. So you have to put the number zero for the standard number distribution. You have to put in the number one in there. Oh, sorry, it's, it's, it doesn't go there. Okay. If you start it, all the fields are going to be blank. So you put the zero here, put the one here, okay, and click outside. That's going to generate the curve here. So that's the standard normal distribution. So what we are going to be interested in again, we have like three main questions, right? We have to find a probability that a random value we will not exceed number x so let's make x be 1 and bam you can see from this applet that they, they also show the area right? the, the region that corresponds to the question you are asking so you ask for the proportion of the curve uh, the, the proportion of the region under the curve that doesn't exceed the, the pi x it is says we let x be 1 okay, so that part that part here it's when x equals to 1 so we compute the area to the left of that line and that gives us pi x4134 and if we if we go back into the Definition of what it means, it means if you pick a number at random and follows this distribution, then the probability that the number you pick is at most 1 is about 84%, which is pretty high. You can try to move x to 2, right? And then you can see the number increases to 0.97. And again, that's that's like the common sense, right? Because that covers more area. It also covers this area, so the numbers has go up. Now it's like point nine seven. So that since since the, the the total area under the the, the curve the region is one, so that ninety seven, my point nine seven, like almost covers the the entire curve. That means that tiny region, like between two. And that is like to the right of the point two. It's gonna be like point zero two three, some small number. And surely you can change that. Uh, if you want to look at the right instead, you just choose that. That's gonna that's gonna show the area that is from your input. Uh, you, you you put you you choose the point two. You want to find the area to the right of that value 
of that line too, and that gives us point two 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 seven five. So if you put, pick a, pick a number at random, that and you know that that number follows its distribution, then the chance that the number is higher than two is pretty small. It's about two percent. If you put, if you perform that a hundred a hundred times, only two of them will be more than two. And you can just play around with that if you pick three, then that yeah you can see that but it's there somewhere. It's gonna be very small. You can choose uh let's use that Okay. Oh so by the way there there are four options. I, I say three, but the, the, there's a the fourth option that again can be deduced from the first three. So the first one is the area to the left. Oh, sorry, this the, the area to the left, the to to the right of the point. Right, this one is the area to the left. Yeah, that's to the right. This one is to the left. This one is outside. So it, it combines the area to the, to the right of that point and the area to the, to the right of the reflection of that point to the negative part. That's gonna be important when you study the interference next week. And we may, be, we may learn to look at the area in between two values. And in practice, you're gonna use like Excel, R, or any software you are familiar with, and that's gonna give you an, these numbers in a moment. You don't have to like use that table. Or if for just in this class, you can use this applet. Like if if I ask, if I give you a, a normal distribution, that's any normal distribution. Like you can you can put the the, the mu, the average here. You, you can put it the, the sigma. Here you can put the x here, and that will give you a number. Then then you can just use that number in homework or in worksheet or whatever. So just you know burn that thing out. Burn that table out. Alright, so next. <coughs> Let's move on to yeah. We have like this type of problem, and yeah, should I'm um, this wrong wrong tip, right? And this is this is the actually the the first one, right? The first one, the the, the order is not the same as the applet. If you pick and run a, a point B, right? If you you want to find the area to the left of B, then that's yeah. Represented by area that area. If it's to the to the right, then it's greater. It's in between two values. It, it gets sandwich. So we have A and B, and you want to find the area in between. And finally, sometimes you want to find the area outside. And all the questions you ask in statistics can be translated into one of these forms. You, you want to find if something is likely, if something is uh, higher than average, or smaller than average, or whatever. Then you first transform that statement, that sentence, into this one of these forms. Right? And then just compute a number and apply that number to the problem you are working on. To compare all these values, you can either like use. I, I, I think there is like a list of all the types of problems, but it is more practical if you just understand these two main keys. Okay. First, the this curve, this normal distribution, is symmetric. Uh, if you want to find this area. To the right of a value b, then that area is the same as the area to the left of the value minus b. Let's say if if if, if b is uh, positive, minus b is negative, 
Right. You look at the area to the to the right. You can kind of just like uh, flip your the flip the paper. And that's gonna give you the area to the left instead. But it's, now it's the left of the negative. Right. It's not the left of that point. It's the left of the left of the negative of that value. So that's is it intuitive, right? And we will see in in a moment that it's gonna struggle a little bit before you can apply this to this rules naturally. So and, and the second one is the rule of the probability function that the area to the left you have you have okay, you, you fix a point B right, the area to the left plus the area to the root to I think it's a bit again, sorry, the, the, area to, the area to the right and the area to the, to the left has to sum up to 1 and the reason is because th these two areas cover the entire region and we know that the, the area of the entire region is 1 so that has to also sum up to 1 just use these two properties and flip the curves around to get the value you want. Okay. Sometimes some app let, let, let you actually compute each of these separately. Okay. But some is not but some doesn't allow to some only allow the, the, the basic oh, the basic sorry the basic um probability so you may have to manipulate the formula a little bit let me set up this. Uh, yeah. No, but that's, that's what the, the, the light. She need to my face. I, 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 I placed it on the, the, the lid of my laptop and it's not stable. So let's uh, move on. So, uh, the classic question of the P table is give you just that. Right. They don't give you that. Actually, they, they don't give you anything at all. They, the, the, the question is like, they just ask you to compute that value. Right. And you have to consult, you have to look up at the, the C table, screenshot your eye, hope you find the right one. Right. But if they are merciful, if they believe you are not going to use that again in your life then they will just like give you a number and ask if you can manipulate that around so let's uh, let's start from the statement right so if you are given that the area this area is 0 0.341 so let's uh, first draw a graph here The standard normal distribution has a center at zero. So put that here. Right. The point here, the number here, is one. So put one here. You are given that this area, which is expressed as the probability that z lies between zero and one, is point three four one four. Sorry. You are given one piece of information and you are asked to determine other information. Right. Actually you, you from that information like the you can determine like so many things. But uh, again just focus on the all the basic things. So from this curve, right, just from this image, what kind of information can you extract from that? And this, this is pretty much like all the question it is trying to ask. So first, let's see if we can find any other area. Okay. If you want to like skip to the hack, so if you <coughs> for the hack, like for for any for any given value, like you you draw the reflection, the negative part, and you are gonna. Divided the whole region into into four regions. Right, one, two, three, four. 
then we have these four regions. So let's say what can we say about any of the regions. So now we are given the information about the region 3. Okay, just that's that strip between 0 and 1. Can we say about can we say anything about region 1, 2, 3, or 4? So I didn't mention this but this can be implied from the rule of probability that if the whole area is one and if this is symmetric then that means each side has area 0.5 right, this is kind of the given from these two from the two rules so you know that um let me move my head a little bit because I'm going to use space there. Here we go. Right, so let me repeat that. Here. So what we know. Right, that's the left part, the area of the, to the left of the center, and the, the area of the region to the right of the center. Uh, each pi five is half and half. Now, if you know that the area to the to the right is half, what else can we say about it? So you can see that the area to the to the right of the curve consists of the area three, right, and four. And what do we know? We know that the area here is pi three, four one. So that means if if the sum is pi five. And we know one, we can determine the other, right? These two have to add up to 0.5. So that is 0.5 minus whatever that number is. That's gonna be about 0.159, right? So just from the single area 3, we can determine that area 4. And that area. I'm erasing everything. And we know that's 12.341. That implies the rest of the region to the right is 0.159. And then by the first rule, the symmetry of the curve, we know that this is reflected to the other, to the other side as well. So that's 0.341. And that's also 0.159. This is what we can deduce without having to look at the question at all. Let's just ignore the question. Given just one area, can what else can we say about the curve? And, and the answer is kind of a lot. Now you, you, you have all these areas. You know this, these four parts. So now let's get back to the problem. So, what if the question, what if you want to find a value, the probability that z is at least 1? Right. So let's just let, look at that and translate that to the graph. Right. And see it's greater than 1, then that translates nicely to the area number 4. Right, because this is this is one. Right? This is even this one. If this is greater than one, is that area the area of that region? So we can just write what we have on the scratch paper on the right. That's easy enough. What about when z is less than one? Right. We are given the area just between these two values but now we are being asked to compute the larger area right so in other words you are given the area 3 you ask you are asked to find the total area of 1 2 and 3 all together you can of course you can just sum this this all up right 0.341 plus 0.341 plus 1 9, Sorry, point one five nine. But remember that we have here, we have something here. 
right? We know that the area to the left is 0.5, right? So we know immediately that this area is already 0.5. So that area, if you look at the region all the way to minus infinity, right? Something is wrong with the pen. Um, give me a moment. Oh, yeah. okay. So that area is consists of the areas to the left of zero, plus the area between zero and one. Let me use a coin between zero and one. And that's the area 3, that's the area 2. And since we know that the left side, this 2, is already 0.5, that's given. And this is also given up here. Or uh, if you want to go to the old school method, you can use, use a C table, whatever you want. So that's 0.3, 1.4. That gives us some of point eight four one four bam second one that's done so let me move my head uh, somewhere else maybe back yeah because we already deduced the the area up here right and so lastly can we find the area that area can we find the probability between minus one and one yes that is exactly the area between one and one and what does that area looks like it's between one and one so you can see this these two regions the region two and three so uh, to write it formally and you divide it by you make into two different regions to the, to the left of zero between minus one and zero and the other area is between zero and one and since we know this is symmetric right, they, look, they look the same in the mirror so each of them is 0.3414 that gives the sum of 0.6h to a I hope that was um, pretty, pretty, pretty clear. Once, once you have drawn this figure with, with the numbers in, in each of the region, then it, it shouldn't be too, too difficult to deduce whatever you are beginning to ask and use what you have here to give the quantity to tell something about that number. And the list goes on and on. You can ask about the probability that c is further than minus 1. You can ask about the probability that the absolute value of c is greater than 1. And so on and so forth. So as long as you, under you understand the math statement here, and you understand which region that that represents, then you can answer any of this question. So that's why I want to emphasize on the two properties that each, each side is of first that uh, it is symmetric. So if you know something on the right, you can deduce that to something on the left. And second, I did. This is split into half and half. And that actually comes from the symmetry of the curve plus the fact that the sum is 1. Right, so let's uh, try another a different question. So again, in the old school question you are not given that. So on like your, on your exam paper, then you, you are gonna just see that chart formula p of z 
greater than or equals to pi four five. This is gonna be kind of painful again to look up. But then let's see. What can we say about that? So the the value here is pi four five. So let's just put put it there. And again, we are gonna divide the whole area into four different regions. So we have the one. The, again, this is the region three. Part one seven three. Let's just use a, a six. Just from that single number, we can deduce the area of the other regions. So again, by symmetry, this is also pi one pi one seven. Since the sum of the whole the, the regions on the right is pi five, then this pi is gonna be like it's gonna be pi five minus pi. Oh, sorry, that's out of the scope. Did we know that this is to some as a I didn't mean the the, the 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 number three. We know that it's two comes up to five. So just the region four is pi five minus the region three. That gives us oops sorry. Um that gives us pi five minus pi one seven three six which is pi three two six four okay let's uh just quickly put that up there so i don't have to move my body and chair right, and finally we can fill in the rest the last one by the symmetry oh and that that mark is minus pi four five okay now we are ready to attack the problem so bring it on what's the first one Find that region. What's that region? So it's um, we pi four five is here. The right is here. So that is equals to the area of region four. I keep erasing the this thing. So that's just pi three two six four. Done. Next. By that region, and again, that's um the left part, right? Left part of the curve past the plus the region three. So that's gonna be pi five plus pi one seven three six. That's pi six seven three six. Or if you want to what if you want to write it formally. This is the region to the left of zero, and this is the region between zero and pi four five. We get that number. So okay, that's done. And lastly, what about the sandwich part, the area between these two values, and between minus pi four five and pi four five? We look at the graph, and we see that it is this area. It's the region. Two and three combined. So just it's just like point uh point one seven three six plus another point one seven three six. That's thirty four point three four seven two. And that's that. We can formally you split that into the part when you see. Between zero and minus pi four five, and the other part when is between zero and pi four five. So this is how we get all these numbers. We are going to link, we are going to mention how you to do this number uh, next week when we study the interference and all the interval stuff. But for now, if you, if if I'm giving you the curve, the the, the normal the, the standard normal distribution curve, and I give you a tiny which is a, a part of the curve. Maybe if you, maybe it gives you three, maybe it gives you two plus three, maybe it gives you three plus one. 
Let, 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 let him go. Let me give you two, three, four. Oh, whatever. You can use all this information to deduce the rest of the curve. And from that point, and you can just answer whatever question you have. So this is a good time to take a look at the worksheet or homework and, and try to work it out yourself. First, without looking at the lecture, and then you can visit back later if you really need it. But all, all you need is just, just this curve and some analyt analysis skills of, of what these terms mean and what what does how how is how is this number represented in as the regions under the curve. So we have another one. <clears throat> I'm just gonna, going to go over this quickly because, like, we we only have the, the standard, normal distribution, like just the standard. So that's gonna have like a table, a boring one, with like millions of values that no one wanna read. But that is like just one single distribution. So what if you have a different Distribution that should be like close to the real question you deal with in statistics. Like if you know that the average of something is thirty five, the variance is two, the variance, the variance is two square. The standard deviation is two. Right. Can you kind of like transform that information from the standard information that we? Or we already have everywhere on the internet to the specific problem we are dealing with the answer is yes but before before you look at these formulas let's just not look at it for now the, the, the idea here is that you can this is what this is what we have right we have the standard normal distribution curve the nice one and we have the real world one maybe it looks like that maybe the center is something like yeah, 35 the where uh, the variant is 4 so the question is can we transform can can we infer something from the numerical value we have to our problem the key concept is called the transformation just like if, if you have a, ru a ruler and if you want to measure something like you, you move the ruler to that object and you get that number and then you use number to do whatever else you want if you have a ruler in inches you measure something you can then you can still Use that inches and transform using some multiplier and, tra and transform that inches, that's that unit in inches to centimeters or meters or whatever you want. Right, so that's the idea. Right. You can you can kind of like move things to measure something else. It's, it's also the same concept. Right? We have two different curves. Let's say they lie on the same. The same line, the same plane, right? You have these two things that right? we know that both of them are normal distributions, right? But then you, you want to get some information of this one. Right? If you, you want to find the area to the right of thirty six or something, so the idea is you can perform two transformation. You can translate. That's a fancy term. And the more common term is a shift. So first, you can shift. You can move that to match the same center. Now this this curve has a center at uh, thirty five. You can shift that. You can shift it so that. Center is now at zero. Right. These two curves still look the same. 
the information you can get from the first curve on the right can be deduced to the information on the left that has a center at zero. Now, if 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 you know that the area and to to the right is let's say point three, then the area of that to the right is also point three. If the 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 width the, the difference from the center is one, then it is thirty five, thirty six. And if we put that number one here, you 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 move thirty five to zero, so you move everything thirty five units to the right. So that means you also move that number thirty six to number one. You move thirty five units. So thirty six minus thirty five is one. And that this area is gonna be the same as this area because we just again move around. We don't we don't actually change the area or anything. The second is again, you may, if you remember from the last few class of last semester, you can scale that down. You you we first move to the right, and then we can scale it down. If you know that the sigma square is four, then we can divide everything by sorry by two to to make the curve goes and nicely of um overlays on the standard normal distribution. Okay. So again, what 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 are we doing here? We have we have the black curve. The, the standard that we have all the values we have the white curve that we got from our real experiments or real samples we if we want to find some information about this curve we can transform that to the standard curve and get that information or get that number and, and then use that number back to infer what we have there so that is the reason we have our this equation. Okay, so we start here. We shift to the right by mu. In this case, uh, the mu, the average, the center is thirty-five. If we subtract, if we subtract the mu, and you subtract that by thirty-five, then the center moves to the to the to the center. Sorry, the center moves to zero. Okay. And this one we scale it down by a factor of theta. If theta squared is 4, theta is 2, so dy we put like the top down by dividing everything by 2. We get this one and this one here, like that value here. Whatever value we start with, let's say this this uh this thing is x. Like when we shift it, it's gonna be here. When we, when we move it down, it's gonna be on this curve. So now we can use that 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 new that new point on the curve to compute all the information about the real statistics, not just the standard one. We shift and scale, and the result is exactly the standard normal distribution. Or if you want, if you prefer the formula, then we can use that. If not, then you sh shift by mu and scale by sigma. I shift to the left or right, scale up or down, and you we got you, and you're going to get what you want. So let's uh, go to the question. Oh, I forgot to turn it off. Let's see, that is supposed to be MC. Uh, no, that doesn't work now. <clears throat> okay, so um, the question is gonna. Uh, let, me, let me turn on the right. It's getting dark here. Okay, so let's, let's see. That does look good. It looks worse. Kind of okay. 
So the question, if it, if it, if we translate the problem and just uh, draw a graph, we have a random variable x, right, which means fifty, and standard deviation ten. Oh, and by the way, I should I should have add like a normal random variable. If we plot graph, then that simply say that the center of this plot is fifty. And the standard deviation is 10. 10 is kind of large. Oh, sorry, the, the variance is 10. Okay, so it spreads out wider. So uh, you are you want to find like the probability that x is greater than 16. Uh, 60, sorry. So 60 is something here. You have this curve. You want to find the area, this area, the area of this region to the right of point 60. So we are, if we just, uh, you, if, if we use the, the picture, like we are going to move this X, this point, um, our space. Chip, 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 chip. Okay, let me use it. Okay, the, the, the goal is to transform that to the standard distribution. Okay. And once we com we accomplish that, we uh we will know that the, the area of the green region is going to be the same as the area of the blue region and the, the question is which number would 60 get mapped to on the uh, standard normal distribution if we have 50 60 with uh, that variance if we shift and scale it what would be the result of that 60? If you move 50 to 0 and make that, uh, that standard deviation B1, then what would that number 60 be moved to? So... We can just use uh, this formula. Uh, we, we know that, that the, the value is 60. It's gonna be moved to eventually that value, right? the, the value, the green value 60 here. It's gonna be oops, sorry, um acting weird again. No. I just wanna move. I don't wanna yeah, uh, okay, sorry about the cup. Alright, so that's that's a goal. Alright, we want to know where. What happened? Did I just delete something? Can I get it back? No. Uh, let me add a pen. A blue one. Okay. So we want to know where that value 60 gets mapped to on the standard curve. And if you, you just use formula, that 60 gets mapped to the number 1. So after the commutation, we know that that value of z is now 1. And once we have that value 1, we can use the z table if you prefer, or use the app or whatever to you have at hand to find the area and that area is going to be exactly the same as the area for the stand, uh, for the original question so right, since since we can look this up and you and we know that the area if, if x is 1 right, the area to the right here 
the area of the region to the right here is pi 15x7 then we can deduce that this area is also pi 15x7 right, so the probability that um, a random variable x is at least 60 is about pi 15x7 or about 15 pi x7 percent one sixth of the time so this is what uh, we use so from any kind of normal distribution you can map uh, sorry you, you can map that to the standard okay. and that and the, and the the area under the curve from the standard normal distribution is going to be the same as the area under the curve for the original normal distribution so that's uh, that's it's, uh, just uh, the, the concept here of how you use the, the value the easy value to compute something kind of harder and in statistics you actually need to study how how we, we, we transform x to z right you also have to study how to transform z to x right usually we react for the problem that z is greater than some number in statistics you have to also know the inverse questions is let's say if we if we if we want to find a point on the graph such that the area to the left is pi 4 then what pi what is that pi And of course, you can use that. Uh, you can use the information from the C table to find that by just looking at the number that closest to pi four. But that's another story. I just want to 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 understand how can how we, how we can use the standard normal distribution because we can use all the numbers that I provide in the applet to get the probability of something from your statistics or your samples and we can and the reason why I only give you one example here because if we go back to that app right let's go back to that app you can see you can we, we can put any mu we want we can put any sigma you want right we don't have to stick with just the standard normal it's version one you can put s mu, any sigma, any x, and that's uh, gonna compute the, the value you want. So in this case, uh, from our previous example, um, the mu or the average center is 50. The sigma, we know sigma square is 10. Oh, sorry, we know, we know that sigma is 10, so the sigma square is... Oh, sorry, um... <coughs> there was a typo um, from the previous... Question the standard uh, The question is supposed to give you the variance, not the standard deviation. Right. Uh, if the the variance is ten, then the standard deviation or just the sigma itself is the square root of ten, which is about three point one. Let's say um we want to f let x be sixty. We want to find a prop that x is. Let me see what I did wrong. Oh yeah, the question was wrong. The six sigma is supposed to be one. Okay, uh, let, let 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 me use that. Right, let's the sigma be ten. So that's this one. We will follow the example we have. Let x be sixty, and bam, that's the same number. Like point one five x six. He got 5x7. So the probability that we give, we, we pick a, a, a random sample out of these samples, that is going to be at least 60. Right? It's going to be in the region here. It's about 1.15 1 
it so you can just like again use that use any number you are given and just get that number easily without having to transform all the numbers but we we perform that just so you understand how that works and how 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 this app works how how they compute that value so sometimes when when the problem gets tricky right like it, it has like this three or oh, only two it has these two numbers but like if, if it, it gets tricky then may, maybe if this app doesn't provide you with the answer you are looking for then you can deduce one yourself by using that transformation okay where are we now I think we can take a break oh yeah that's uh, a different one. Oh, by the way um yeah that the, the, the one typo is here is to be 10 square not just 10 but everything is fine just change that number to 10 square uh, then uh, again so let's uh, let's just look at the question so you you have produce lots of cans, soda cans, right? And you know that the average volume of a can of soda is uh, two fifty millimeters. Let's ignore the unit for a moment. We standard deviation to that that is small, so it's still kind of like lump together. It gets close together in, in the center. If you produce this stuff, then you you would you would worry if the volume of a can is too low, or like because because I think I think there's a law if the 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 difference between the volume indicated on the box on or on the container differs, and if first more than five percent, then you can get through for tricking your your customers. So five <clears> percent <throat> of that is like seven five five but anyway uh, we we concerned about the case when it's too low right if the volume is is higher than 250 i i, I believe all your customers are gonna be happy right the one is gonna complain but if the volume is too low if you 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 expect that amount of soda and you get less then you are gonna get grumpy right. so we want to know is that going to happen often enough that I have to worry so again now, now we can yeah that's missing the square here so now we can use that number like we have the, the mu we have the sigma we have the value x so now we transform that value x right, to a value of c so we transform that curve so that sigma is 1 so that the standard deviation is 1 and the center is 0 and you want to know where this point, this point 245 oops sorry where this point 245 gets mapped to the standard normal distribution so from this computation just you know, subtract, divide or whatever we know that that number is Minus 2.5 What that means Right, see 0 and 2.5 is pretty far, right? What that means is the 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 more precise image should be that It means that that part even if like it looks close like only 5 away Which is um, 2 percent away then the actual curve the actual area of the standard normal distribution is like very go very far left from the center and if you actually compute the area you get the number 0 0.006 so what it means it means if the if this can of soda have a, a normal distribution for the volume then the probability that a can of soda is too light it contains too few volumes it's about 0.006 percent 
oh, sorry, zero pi zero zero six two one, or uh, pi six two one sense, which is we can see that okay, that's low, right? Com compared to two forty five, right? If if you just look at the PL number, then you you have no idea if it's if it's going to be likely to happen. You may say, oh, two two. If if you just look at this curve, like I think this curve is actually misleading. Because it looks like it, it contains a pretty large area, P pretty large. It contains a region with pretty large area. But if we actually precisely graph that, then it should look like that. And since mu mu is, mu is high and sigma is small, so two forty five is something here. Uh, and from that computation, we know that this whole area, like most of the cans, like if you put the cans at random, most of them, in this case, it is um ninety nine ninety nine point four percent. Oh, sorry, ninety nine point ninety eight point percent should be not too far from the average, not too far from the actual number printed on the container. So you don't have to worry about that number that much. You don't you don't you don't have to worry that you are gonna get sued. And of course with uh factories with very high precision and with very high tech equipment, the sigma is going to be very small, like maybe 0.1 or even smaller than that, because they can like precisely measure or weight or the components or the materials you use in your factory then this is gonna even be less likely to happen like if, if we if we increase the sigma to pi one so we can we can do it real quick here so that we change that number to pi one right, and then if you compute that that number is gonna be 50 right. what is the probability that this is gonna be less than 50 for the standard normal distribution you uh the, num the number one is well, well here, two is here, three is here, right? Before five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way to fifty, you're gonna get like a very, very, very thin curve, and that area is gonna be like I don't know. I'm, I'm making a number up. I mean, it has very, very small chance that you you get a defect product that is doesn't wait up to the standard. Okay. Yeah, to, to to summarize, right? If you want to find that, uh, the, the rule is to transform the shift to the right by mu, you divide by sigma. But if you want a handy formula, like next to you when you do homework or exam, then we can use all these three. Again, this three are the standard. Like you, we, we want to ask about information to the left, to the right, or in between, some things. So I think that's the end of the part 2, we are gonna continue to do the part 3 soon, I have to fix all this light as you can see my body is disappearing. No.